But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned, if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good useful time together. As you see the topic is why Ibn Farooq? Ibn Farooq in case you do not know uh, he claimed to be a sheikh and he's from Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan sorry and uh, he claimed that he have knowledge and obviously he does and that's why he admit uh, that his prophet is not Abrahamic. But the question is, why Muslim they keep saying to us that Muhammad was following Abraham, Muhammad was following Abraham, Muhammad was following Abraham, and then we find out that Muhammad was not Abrahamic. Just to refresh your memory, actually we play this part in every intro we start our video with. We put it there for a reason because it's important. Because Islam as a religion is based on theft, claiming something is not true, that Muhammad worshipped the same God of Abraham, and uh, he is just following the steps of Abraham. But this uh, sheikh, he said the truth, that Muhammad is not Abrahamic. And actually he explained even why. Listen carefully. And again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. So the people of Mecca, they were pagans. Muhammad, he don't even know who is Gabriel. So until the moment, according to this sheikh, until the moment Muhammad become a prophet, Muhammad, he never heard of an angel, his name Gabriel. He never heard of Abraham. Then if we ask the Muslims now the question, what was the religion of Muhammad then, during that time, before he become a prophet? Any Muslim can tell us? What was Muhammad worshipping for the last 40 years of his life? Remember, the Muslim, they claim that he received the first revelation at the age of 40. So Muhammad was worshipping what? In the last 40, 40 years, 40 years, not four years of his life, what the name of the God he was worshipping. And he was disconnected from anything have to do with Abraham to the point he did not know who was Abraham, and he did not even know who was Gabriel. He's from Pakistan. Okay, I thought he is from Afghanistan. It doesn't matter, it's the same. He said, this guy, we heard him, that the people of Quraysh, they were pagans. And Muhammad is their son. So he was pagan too. And this is explained why he never heard of Abraham. And he never heard of the angel Gabriel. Because those are angels are named in the books of the Jews and the Christians. 
So how Muhammad would know about them makes sense. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. So the people of Mecca were pagan, and obviously Muhammad was pagan too. And actually, even the Quran confirmed that Muhammad was pagan. Now, the Muslim for sure, they try to fix it, you know, as usual, duct, duct tape religion. But that will not work, you know. When the Quran is saying that Allah, he found Muhammad being lost, Dalan actually is lost in religion, not Dal, like he, he lost his way to go to Las Vegas, right? Uh, here the Muslim, they try to give you different translation. And this is why we say always you can trust Islamic translation. So if you change the translator here, let us do uh, change to different one. This is Ahmad Raza Khan. Let us go to other uh, liar. This is Hilari and Khan. Look at look what they said here. And he found you and aware and aware of the Quran. I mean, do you see how stupidity? How he would be an aware of the Quran if the Quran never been received yet? Is it this stupidity? I mean, when they try to do duct tape, what do you mean he found you an aware of the Quran? Like, are you saying that Allah, he opened his eyes like, what? He got surprised that Muhammad did not know the Quran. He did not receive the Quran yet. Was the Quran exist in order for Muhammad to be aware of the Quran? So when they try to fix it, they make it more stupid. Now, depending how smart you are and how much you read in details carefully, many people, they don't really care. They just read, hey, you know, like, you know, many, I saw many, many. I mean, there's millions of people that read the same book we are reading, but they don't find how stupid it is. So if he found him an aware, an aware of what? In the Quran and its legal laws, but... How Muhammad will be aware of it if he did not receive it yet? And when you say he found it, he found you unaware, that's mean Allah, he made discovery. Do you understand? If I say I found this guy thirsty, and then I gave him water. So I'm reporting a find, something new came up. If we say that NASA, they found a new star, that's mean NASA reporting that they found something new and it is a star. So when Allah, he found Muhammad, unaware, it's clearly saying that Muhammad, he been unaware and Allah was surprised that Muhammad do not know. And that will destroy the whole idea that Allah is God, because Allah should be always, he do not need to find what found you. What do you mean he found it? Who is the one who made Muhammad supposed to? The Muslim, they say Allah. Okay, so how Allah, he found Muhammad and aware? Is that a news to Allah? Obviously, it's news. He was not aware. And both of them, they are aware. Allah is not aware that Muhammad do not know. He was lost. And Muhammad is unaware of the law of Allah. Look how stupid this religion is. But just to show you how they lie, if we change the translation, you see, if the Quran is saying something, why the Muslims add things between two brackets? You know, the Muslims, they claim that the Quran is the perfect book of God. So why the perfect book of God need to add, to add a sentence, long sentence, to explain the book of God if God make it clear? We just change a translation to different translator, all of them are Muslims, and found you wondering and guided you. Wondering, lost. Look what happened now. The previous translation, 
and aware of the Quran and the legal law. This guy, he found him wondering. This guy is more honest, by the way, in translation. Still, he's not being truthful. Because dalan, dalan is a word mean lost. Actually, the same verse, the same word is exist in the first chapter in the Quran. Dalan, Dalin, Dalin is a group. Dalin is one. So if we go to the first chapter in the Quran, Al Fatiha, which is the opening, which is a fabrication, Muhammad trying to copy the, the prayer of Jesus he taught to his disciple. He said here, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alayhum. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. You see, الضالين. What the Muslims translate the word dalin? They went astray. Do you see it? Do you see how they lie? It's the same word. So how here it is mean going astray, and there mean wandering or unaware. Because those people they worship Muhammad. Nobody dare even to say the truth that the Quran says that Muhammad was dal, which means he was astray, which means he was a kafir, which means he was a pagan. It's in the front of you. So Muhammad the pagan been exposed in this case. that he was lost and he is not a believer and the Muslim they are trying to duct tape their prophet. If we change the translator, let us try a different one. Up top. Didn't he find you unguided? The word dal mean unguided? Anyone who speak Arabic will be dying from laughing. We just showed you that dal mean went astray, been deceived. The same exact word. And we can change here the translator too. You know what? Let us do this. What about we see what the translator, which translator here we have? Khattab. So I will switch the other verse to Khattab too. I want to see how he translates the same word in different verse. Look at the coward. He translated as astray. The same guy, the same word, he changed the translation. In Al Fatiha, verse number seven, chapter number one, verse number seven, the word dalin, which is dal, he translated the word as who are astray. And those are the Christian, by the way. Supposedly were deceived. The same word here, he changed it. Uh, didn't he find you and guided uh, prophet? Then he guided you. They don't dare to say that Muhammad was pagan, satanic, and actually he's still satanic anyway. Let us keep changing the translation. Maybe we get lucky with one Muslim have little dignity to give us correct translation. I don't know what the name of this guy. Mabara Kukuburi look like a Pakistani name. He found you unaware and he guided. Look, he is own unaware. He's unaware. Unaware of what? What the heck is that? I mean, why they have zero dignity? Why they have zero honesty? This is their supposedly their holy book. This is their holy book. If Muslims cannot be decent with their own holy book, they will be decent with what? If I take the same word, I will copy it in the front of you. And I will take it to Google Translation. Life in the front of your eyes. Copy paste. 
Look what happened. Nolan. Stray. <laughs> Meaning lost. Do you see it? Lost. Astray. Show more. Now, for sure, this is Google Translation, but just to show you how they lie in order to cover up for who is Muhammad. If we go to the front place, we will find that Muhammad in the Quran supposed his God talking to him. He do not even know what is faith. He do not even know what is the book. The Quran says, وَمَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْإِيمَانِ You don't know even what is faith. Let us open the verse. But why Muhammad is saying something like this about himself? I mean, why this guy is exposing himself? Remember, Muhammad, he was living between people. Who knows who is he? So he's not exposing anything. This is for all, for you, 1400 years after, you know, who do not know who is Muhammad, you are learning. But people who live next to him in his town, they knew he is a fraud. He knew, they knew he is a pagan. They knew that he have nothing to do with this. So in chapter 42, Ashura, it says, and again, this is the Muhammadan false translation as usual, but we will read it. And we have sent to you, O Prophet of Allah, revelation. By the way, this is false translation because it says, O Hayna, which means inspire. Revelation, it can be by an inspiration, it can be by uh, God talking to you or an angel talking to you, but not inspiration inspiration is different so the muslim here they are lying because the arabic word it says awhayna awha is inspiration not revelation inspiration is it it, it, it can be about revelation but it is a way you receive it it's not somebody coming to your door squeezing you like what muhammad happened to muhammad supposedly and saying to you read this is not inspiration this is delivery. Somebody delivered a message to you. So why he is using the word of Hina? This is stupid of Muhammad showing how weak his Arabic is. And this is the false translation here saying, Revelation. If we change the translator, <clears throat> and I, I'm sorry that I have to change the translator just to expose this. Remember, we are here to expose their lies. The whole idea of us being here <laughs> is just to show you how he lie. Look at this. I just changed the translator. I did not change the book. Do you see it says inspiration? Do you see it? So if you are a person who want to learn about Islam and you listen to Muslims, you are going to learn a lot of lies and a lot of deception. There's a huge difference between revelation and inspiration. So we send you inspiration with our spirit and then the muslim they will say to you that this spirit is jibreel but nowhere in the quran it says that that the spirit is jibreel you know not what is the book nor what is faith Again, this is chapter 42, verse number 52. If you are a person trying to learn, so in the future, if you speak to Abdul, you can get him busted in two seconds. So the Quran confirmed that Muhammad, he did not know what is faith. What was his faith then? Do we have any Muslim he would like to volunteer to tell us? If Muhammad do not know what is faith, 
Do you see? This is not Christian Prince saying that. This is not uh, weak hadith. This is Quran. He did not know the book. He never heard of a book. And he did not know what is faith. And now the Muslims, they will try to fix it. They say, oh, they, you know, he did not know... Uh, I mean, the Quran, what, uh, what Quran? That's really stupid. It says, you know not what is the book. And you do not know what is faith. So he never have faith in the true God, which is supposed to be Allah. And he have zero knowledge of the book of Allah. Now, if the Muslim, they would say this is the Quran, that would be even more stupid because the previous verse saying the Muslim, they tried to add the word Quran. But as you see, Muhammad did not receive the Quran yet to say to him, you know not what the book. And if Muhammad knew the book or he did not know the book, that will not change that he have zero faith. And if he have a faith, obviously the verse is not about a true faith. He have no faith, which means Muhammad was a pagan. He believed in different things. And then here it says, But we have made it between two brackets as usual. They add things, it's not there. This Quran, a light wherewith we guide who is ever of our slave. Okay, hold on. The Quran did not come to Muhammad yet. No problem. Isn't it stupid to say to the man, you know not what the book? Why? Because the Quran keeps saying, people of the book, people of the book, people of the book. So if Muhammad, he do not know the book, which is the Quran, it's very stupid to say such a statement for him because the guy, how he will know it anyway? What does that mean? And if Muhammad, he knew about Abraham, well, he should have faith in the teaching of Abraham. If Muhammad, he don't like the teaching of the Jews and Muslims, they claim that Muhammad was Abrahamic, then Muhammad should know the faith of Abraham and she should have faith. But here it says, you do not even know what is faith. And you know, funny, you know, this is how stupid the author of the Quran, uh, the author of the Quran claimed that Abraham was not a Christian, neither a Jew. Don't you find this is very embarrassing and a stupid argument? How Abraham will be? <laughs> I mean, the stupidity is beyond imagination. So when Muhammad, the, the, the Christian and the Jews, they get him busted, obviously he know nothing about Abraham. He do not even know who is Abraham. Who is the father of Abraham? The Quran have wrong names. Look what the Quran says. And let us open the verse. Chapter 3, verse number 67. It says, Abraham was not a Jew, nor yet a Christian, but he was an upright man who had surrendered to Allah. The, the translation here, translating the word Muslim as surrender, this is true translation, surrender. But look what happened here. Muhammad, he is trying to make himself, attach himself to Abraham. The Christian, they told him, obviously, you are a fraud. You do not even know who is Abraham. Muhammad, he is getting the help from his God. 
So this answer you see is not the answer of Muhammad. This is the answer of God. And as you know, God, he don't say stupid things if he is a true God. If you go two verses before this one, you will see the most stupid verse in the Quran. This is the most stupid verse in the Quran. Why? Look what it says. Oh, people of the scriptures. And this is why we say to the dummy Muhammadan, why you keep saying to us we are the people of the scriptures if you claim that our scriptures is corrupted? You see the stupidity? It says here, O oh, people of the scriptures, why would you argue about Abraham when the Torah and the gospel were not revealed till after him? Have you no sense? <laughs> so the stupid Muhammad saying that the one who came after, he cannot argue about the one who came before. Do you understand now why I'm saying Muhammad and his God is the most stupid low IQ? Anyone get the, uh, the, 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 the issue? Why I'm calling this one the most stupid verse in the Quran? Who want to help me? Why I'm saying this is the most stupid verse in the Quran? Let's see who is in the chat. He will give us a correct answer. Why will ye argue about Abraham when the Torah and the gospel were not revealed till after him? Have you? Ye then no sense. So what the stupid Muhammad did? He just admitted that the one who come after he cannot argue with the one who come before him. Do you see it? But is it Muhammad? He came at the end. <laughs> Listen carefully. I'm going to practice this logic with the Muhammadan. Why you argue about Abraham when your book came after Abraham? The Quran says so, not me. So Muhammad cannot argue with the Christians and the Jews because he is the one who came at the end. <laughs> this is why I say Muhammad is a very low IQ and thank you God that Muhammad is so stupid and the book is a stupid book because if he's a smarter, that will make it harder for us to expose his lies. So the one who come after, he cannot debate with the one who come before. So Muhammad, he lost all his argument. This verse destroy all of us now. It's in the front of you. Anyone remember what chapter we are talking about? What chapter we are talking about? Because later you might say to me where I can find this. Chapter 3, verse number 65. And then, Muhammad, he continued with his stupidity. He is saying to them, you are arguing about things you have no knowledge of. Anyone notice how stupid he is? He just said that Muhammad, he have no knowledge of the book and he have no faith. And he found him astray, and he guided him. This is chapter 93, verse number 7. And this is a chapter 42, verse number 52. So now the Jews, I mean, who knows Abraham more than the Jews? This is literally their grandfather. Suddenly the Jews, they are the last one to know who is Abraham. And who is the one who is telling them that a person, according to Muslim, who do not know how to read, how to write? Why you are arguing about something you have no knowledge of it? And by the way, translation here is a lie. It says, whereof ye have some knowledge. The book it says, the Quran says, you have no knowledge. Zero knowledge. Let us switch to another idiot. Look at the translation here. 
In Arabic it says, Laysa lakum bihi ilm. You have no knowledge. Look at the translation. Why, who would, uh, would argue about which is known to you? But why do you argue about something which is unknown to you? What the heck is that? You are the one who would argue about that which is known to you. But why do you argue about something which is unknown to you? And they were talking about what, Abraham? And then Muhammad, he keep, you know, the wisdom is keep coming. He says, Abraham was not a Jew or a Christian. And this will remind me of the guy who died, you know, the guy who offered me five BMW, if I can answer the question. You remember? Christian Prince, I have a challenge for you. If you can answer those questions, I will give you five BMW. Show me one verse in the Bible. Says that Christ was a Christian. If you can show me one verse in the Bible, say that Christ was a Christian, you get five VMWs. Like the stupid idiot, how a Christ will be a Christian? I mean, do you see the stupidity? Now, Muhammad is doing the same. He want to give us five VMW to the Jews and to the Christians. If you can answer this question. And he is saying to them, show me one verse in the Bible that Abraham was a Jew or a Christian. Stupidity is beyond imagination. If there is any Muslim, by the way, in the chat, you don't you know, agree with me, please feel free, you know. Post your comment, and uh, if you have a shake, would like to call me, I can open my Skype if he has a shake. And then we go to the second step of this conversation. We prove to you that Muhammad never will have a book. Muhammad never have faith. You do not even know what faith is about, as you see. And you can change the translation, Muslims, whatever translation you want, all of them, they will lead to one direction, that Muhammad was not a believer. And we have the video of Sheikh Uthman. We say, thank you, Uthman for saying the truth, that Muhammad never was Abrahamic. He never even heard of Gabriel, and this is telling us the whole story, that Muhammad, he have nothing to do with the God of the Christians. And Muhammad was from a pagan town. His family, they were pagan. And this guy from Pakistan, he is explaining why Muhammad do not know, because he is a pagan. He, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from See? So, Mecca, the people of Quraysh, they were pagan. So how in the world Muhammad will know how Muhammad will be Abrahamic? He is not. And Ibn Farooq, he confirmed that. Now we have a guy, his name Hassan Farooqi. Uh, if you want Hassan Farooqi, I can take your call, if you like to call me. But I'm assuming that you are just a kid. If we continue, if we ask the Muslims, what was the faith of Abraham anyway? They will say to you, he worshiped one God. That's it. There's a billion religion, they worship one God. Who is Abraham, Muslims? Who can tell us who is Abraham? Any Muslim here can tell me who is Abraham? The person we are talking about, Abraham, now, if we try to find who is he, how we can find him in the Quran? Who is Abraham? Just to show you another form of stupidity of the so-called Muhammad, the prophet of Allah. Chapter 6, verse number 74. 
And the funny, this chapter is the chapter of animals. The story of Abraham in the chapter of the animals, why he was part of the zoo. And when Abraham, he said to his father, Azar, look at this stupidity. What is the name of the father of Abraham? Azar? Azar in the ancient Aramaic means stupid, foolish. So the stupid Muhammad, he heard somebody, mostly Waraq ibn Nawfal, saying that Abraham, he had a conversation with his father, and he said to him, it's foolish to worship idols. The stupid Muhammad, he thought that the word foolish is the name of the father of Abraham. So he put it in the Quran. So what, what, what Allah said to him? When Abraham said to his father, Azar, which means foolish. So he said to his father, what? Foolish, stupid. This is stupid. Don't worship idols. And now it makes sense, right? There's nobody will say the name of his father. Why, why you are saying to his father, uh, Azar? This not, either you say, his, uh, why you are saying his father, Azar? Do he have other father? So. When Abraham, he said to his father, Azar, foolish. And by the way, here, this is a stupid translation edition. Are you going to worship idols? If you ask the Muslims, they will say to you, Oh, this is the name of the father of Abraham. Do you see how stupid this man is? He claimed to be a prophet of God, and the one is talking now is Allah. If we ask this guy, his name is Hassan. And look, guys, how he refuted me. Just to show you how a Muslim he refuted me. Why? Who, who deleted his message? It's by itself, I guess. Uh... I was going to copy his message. I don't know how it's gone. Look what this guy he said. I wish I can I copy it before he deleted. it. Maybe he deleted himself. He says, Muhammad is a prophet. You like it or not? He is a prophet. You do not know who is Abraham. And he thinks that the word foolish is the name of the father of Abraham. How stupid such a man is. Tim, Timothy is saying, you want to talk about names? Why did the Old Testament call your Jesus Emmanuel? Obvious error in the book. Here you notice how the Muslim they try to change the topic in order to avoid the scandal of their prophet. Because I'm waiting for a Muslim to answer me how stupid his prophet is and how stupid his God. Look what he says to me now. This is supposed to be a refutation now. This is how Muslims they refute. Laugh with me. In the Old Testament, you wear, look, look. You want to talk about names. Why did the Old Testament call your Jesus Emmanuel? Obvious error in the book. Anyone understand even with the question? Do you see the stupidity? Do you see the stupidity? If I ask you what Emmanuel mean, help me. Tim. Help me. Don't tell me like uh, Mimi Hijab, Elijah, mean God with us. Hmm? What, what uh, Emmanuel mean? I'm tricking you, by the way. What Emmanuel mean? I'm waiting for the answer. Mimi Hijab, he says, Elijah mean God is with us. Hmm. Tim, I'm waiting for your help. Hello? Obviously, you are very silly and very stupid to the point you do not even know what you are saying. I'm asking you, what Emmanuel mean?
You see, we are not the same as Muslims. If somebody asks them a question, they block him. We block you only if you are, you know, like saying stupid words and you're repeating, you're spamming. But as long as you're asking questions, no problem. Now he is dead. He is playing dead. But his prophet is not playing dead for sure. He is dead for real and Jesus is alive. Emmanuel means God is with us. And what does this have to do with the Old Testament? And what does this have to do with the New Testament? Jesus is God with us. Isn't it the Christian they believe that Jesus is God? Isn't it the stupid Quran says that the Christian they say that Jesus is Allah? So he is God with us. Now we have another Abdul. He is trying to be smarter. So he said the following. By the way, all of them, they are genius. They are genie, yes, not genius. Hassan Farooqi, he said, CP Muhammad is your prophet. Whether you like it or not, whether you acknowledge him or not, he is a prophet for the entire world. So show some respect. Okay, I will, you know, I will respect Muhammad. Shall I do the same as those black guys who ride your prophet? They were respecting him when they rode him. Can you tell me that a prophet of God sent by Allah a bunch of black men, they rode your prophet, and they were naked all day long. I guess this is the way to show respect to Muhammad. You get naked as a man, and your penis is like moving between your legs, and you jump in the top of his back. And you say to him, she, hey, mule, she, ha <laughs> When somebody speak about respect, respect is something you earn. Your prophet is a child molester sex offender, criminal, thief, even his own son, wife, he did not leave her alone. He went to the house of his own son and he flirted with the wife when he, the son, was away. And he said to her, praise be to Allah who made my heart flip for you. It is Allah's fault. It's not his fault. Even when he go filthy, he claimed that the God, his God, he made his penis go stand up when he saw her. It's not his fault. So we have to show respect to Muhammad, and I agree with you. And I just did. I hope you like it. You like it or not, who care? And you know, Muslim, they speak like, you know, you like it or not. Yeah, Abdul, don't you see what you are doing to your prophet? Thousands and thousands of Muslims leaving Islam. Hmm. So what we notice here, that Muhammad do not know who is Abraham, and who is his father, and where Abraham live, and not only that, Muhammad he claimed, just to you know that the, the drama will continue. I hope you guys are taking reference. If we ask the Muslims, did Abraham came to Mecca? They will say, yeah, sure. Abraham and uh, Hajar and Ishmael, and Ishmael he married from an Arabian tribe, and then Muhammad is from the descendant of Abraham, from Ishmael. The Quran says, chapter 2, verse number 1 to 7, the one who raised up the foundation of the Kaaba is Abraham. Focus with me. Just to show you how low IQ is the author of the Quran. This remind me, by the way, of the joke of Mimi Hijab when he said, if this book is made by other than Allah, you will find a lot of contradiction. Yes, he said that. And then Borat, he was, even though he's a Borat, he was smarter than the Muhammad and his God. He said to him, well, you know what, you idiot? I have a phone book. I don't think it's made by Allah. And as mentioned, if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> <laughs> this is how stupid this religion is. And even that challenge did not work. Look, who is the one who built the Kaaba? Abraham, by the way, rebuilt the Kaaba, not built the Kaaba, because the Muslims, they think, or they say, that the first one who built the Kaaba was the angel of Allah. Yeah, brother. And the Muslims, they have tons of videos. All of, all of them they are just a joke. Like the bird don't shit on the Kaaba. Go and search in Google. You will see the shit is all over. They go to clean the, the roof every few days. 
there is a there's they found a ladder there's a picture a picture a ladder going up to the sky allahu akbar this is what the shadow of the building behind do you know that a brother airplanes cannot fly do you know that there is an x-ray there's a video actually i can show it to you a muslim who is claiming to be a scientist this is a scientist so imagine if the scientist saying this how the ignorant will say a scientist he say that when the american went to the moon hmm? when the american always when the american the american is the one who discover everything most of them discover nothing when the american went to the moon they found an X-ray coming from the Kaaba. Brother, I'm trying to find the video so we can play it for you. Let me see if I can find it. And then they published it in the internet. I, I forgot how many days, 16 days, 17, something like that. But at that time, there was no internet for public. There was no internet. They published it in the internet and then they deleted. Because they don't want the world to see that this X-ray is coming from the Kaaba. Let me search in Arabic, maybe I can get better luck. And you know, today Saudi Arabia have, I found it, here we go. You want to laugh? I found the video. Translated ready by Memory TV. And the funny is, look, there's Muslim here, they are saying, Subhanallah, he believe it, this donkey. I mean, Memory TV is posting the video just for a laugh, so people will laugh at Islam. The Abdul, he copied it. Thank you for copying it. He says, MashaAllah, a beam came out of Mecca. An X-ray. So this is an official Islamic TV, and they have an interview about scientific discovery. What is the discovery, brother? واخد بالك في الاتجاه العلمي بمعنى ايه؟ ان هم لما طلعوا في الفضاء وصوروا فلقوا الارض كره معلقه ومظلمه ولذلك حتى الراجل قال ايه؟ اجدها كره مظلمه معلقه من الذي علقها؟ Guys, when I'm strong he went to the heaven, to the, to the space, to the moon. He says I found it like a ball is hanged. Who is the one who hanged it? is what he said. If you want to look for somebody who make up stories, nobody can beat Muslims. Question to the Muslims, where we can find those things? The funny is, there's a Christian guy, his name is Rashid. He's an ex-Muslim. He called Armstrong and he asked him the questions they said in this program. And he's, he was laughing. And they said, actually, not only that, the Muslim, they claim that he converted to Islam. <laughs> My cat converted to Islam. I don't have one, by the way, because now she is a Muslim. See, guys, he wanted to say, it's Allah. But he did not say that. Why you did not say Allah? Come on, you should say that. كتبوه في الشبكة العنكبوتية في الإنترنت وخلوه على مدى 21 يوم ثم أخفوه 21 days guys they found an x-ray coming from the earth and later he will tell you where from the earth you know where, where it's coming from so they they found a shua the translation is not you know uh, they found a, a shua which means x-ray a ray not x-ray sorry a ray light coming from the earth and they publish it in the internet for 21 days. And then after that, disappear. This guy cannot find it no more. But at that time, there's no internet.
how this guy he was able to see it in the internet I want to know any Muslim can tell us I mean do you people even have a brain when you make up a lie at least make it make it you know like uh, you know a, a little bit acceptable there was no internet this guy he lived in Egypt he saw it in the internet for 21 days he's counting the days Okay, hold on. Now, the Saudi Arabia, they have satellite. Emirates have satellite. Qatar have satellite. Iran have satellite. Take pictures of, this, of the X-ray. They show it to us. Only the American, they can see it. And on, on the stupidity here, how you can see the X-ray from the sky, but you cannot see it from the earth. I mean, imagine the stupidity, guys. You are more close to the source of the ray you cannot see it. And the one is so far, he can see it. Can you believe the stupidity? As long as it's visible to the eyes, how somebody is on the moon, he can see the ray, but the one who is next door, he is under the Kaaba, he cannot see it. And then the lie continue. It's getting bigger. ثم <laughs> أخفو. أخفوه لماذا؟ يعني الأمور تتبع يعني مقاصدها مقاصدها يعني يعني why they hide it why they hide it the brother well, you know you know why you know why you know because they don't want you to know the truth that the Kaaba is the bed of Allah the house of Allah so they hide it brother you know why you know the thing يعني إخفاء دعنا نقول إنه له دلالة مثلا له دلالة كبيرة جدا لسبب لان هذا الـ 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 البيت العتيق يعني هم لما جم ولقوا فيها شعاع لقوا الشعاع ده قصير الموجه <تصفيق> لما لقوا هذا guys it's a short wave this uh, ray is a short wave just take a note please it's a short wave uh... الشعاع ابتدوا يركزوا الصوره uh... فوجدوا انه خارج من مكه <تصفيق> وبالتركيز وجدوا انه خارج من الكعبه so they start focusing with the picture with the camera and then they found it, it's coming from Mecca. And then they focus more, and then they found it's coming from the Kaaba. How many people they lie to when they say those things? This is official TV. This is not a joke. This is how they brainwash. They lie with no shame. No shame. Nobody called them, says, where, where we can find this information? How you get this information? At that time, there's no internet. How they publish it for 21 days. You live in Egypt, and they publish it in the internet for 21 days. How you get this information? And how you know it now, as long as they hide it? And now today we have satellite. All Islamic countries, they have satellite actually. Why you don't zoom in? in the Kaaba and take the picture of the X-ray. Are you telling me that the camera of the American 30, 40 years ago were better than your camera today? This is why we say Islam without lies dies. It's true. Going back to our topic about Abraham, the Quran says that Abraham he raised up the foundation of the Kaaba, him and Ishmael. It's in the front of you. Do you see it, people? So if there is any, anyone for a second will suspect that Abraham was there, no way. It says it clearly. He is the one who raised the foundation of the house. Which house we are talking about? El Bayt. Any Muslim you ask him what is El Bayt, he will say to you, the Kaaba. Change the translation if you don't like this translation. Let us go to the front terrorist. Hilali and Khan. He rose up the foundation of the Kaaba. Tap into this. Here we go. But remember, the funny is, when the Muslim they say and remember, I mean, it's how stupid it is to say remember. Like, how, who remember? We were there. What does that mean? Just, just let it go. When Abraham... Ibrahim and his son Ishmael, by the way, it doesn't say his son, it says an Ishmael, 
we are rising the foundation of the house between two bracket the Kaaba at Mecca okay so now now the Quran confirm that the Kaaba was rebuilt at least if not built from the first time by Abraham and Ishmael if you ask Muslims was Abraham a prophet they would say sure he is a prophet big prophet well, Ishmael he is a prophet too where was that? In Mecca. It's in front of you. It says Mecca. Did he have his family there? Yes, he have family. The wife of Abraham, Hajar. He have kids? Okay, yeah, he have kids there. Ishmael, don't you see? Are you, are you blind? Then the stupid Muhammad, he said the following. And now try not to laugh with me. According to Muhammad, Nobody came to Mecca as a prophet to warn people ever. Never. Chapter 34, verse number 44. And we had not given them scriptures which they could study, nor send to them before you, Muhammad, any warner. Do you see it? People, do you see it? Are we taking notes? This is a chapter 34. Let us go up so we can put them together. Chapter 34, verse number 44. But this verse confirming that nobody was in Mecca before, and they never received a book before, and never received a warning before. This is what the verse is saying. The Muslim, they will say, Oh, this is about uh, the people at that time. Hold on. It says before thee. You strip it. Do you know how to read? Before thee. We're talking about before and in the past. And the past go to the past. So how Abraham is the one who built the Kaaba, and yet... He never was there. This is a book written by a donkey. And each time he speak, he raise his tail and he deliver poo, poo Chapter 2, verse 127 says that the one who raised the foundation of the Kaaba is Abraham and his son Ishmael. And the Muslim, they agree, supposedly, they say, all of them they agree together, not with me. That Hajar, the, the wife of Muhammad, of uh, Abraham, was there, and she lived there, and even she died there, and her son Ishmael too. Ishmael was a prophet. Abraham was a prophet, according to them. So how the Quran says that those people of Mecca they never receive neither scriptures, neither a warning. Especially the Quran confirm that the Quran, in the Quran is saying that Abraham, he have books, Suhufi Ibrahim. Chapter 87, verse number 19. The scriptures of Abraham and Moses. So Abraham have his scriptures. The Quran come from that chapter 87, verse number 19. And Moses have his scriptures. Did Abraham come to Mecca without his scriptures? Do you see the stupidity people? Did Abraham come to Mecca without his faith? Did Abraham tell his people not to worship pagan gods? The verses we just showed you, it says, we never send them a warner before thee. Zero. And we never send them scriptures before thee too. Do you see why we laugh when the Muslim, they say that Muhammad is Abrahamic? They do not know what Abraham means. Ask all the Muslims now what Abraham means, do not know. Who is the father of Abraham? Wrong name. 
Not only that, Muhammad, he said that Abraham is a Hanif. I mean, how stupid that statement is. Hanif in Aramaic language, and you can speak to Sam Shamoon, he speaks Aramaic very well. Hanif means pagan. This is what Hanif means. Kafir. So, how you say that Abraham was not a Christian, was not a Jew, but he was a Hanif? He was a pagan. The stupid Muhammad do not know what Hanif mean. He put it in the Quran. <laughs> Hanif means somebody is pagan. Somebody worship idols. Somebody is a fraud. False teacher. Do you see why we laugh at the stupid cult of Muhammad? And as you see, everything we said here, we show a reference in the front of you. And what the Muslims are doing in the chat? Watch their text. Hassan Farooqi saying to Andrew, show me one verse in the Quran if you are truthful. Uh, Hassan, what we are showing you in the screen. Do you see why sometimes I lose my patient and I block those kids? So what we are doing in the screen? Throw me, I train you to throw me one verse in the Quran if you are truthful. But you know what? Your wisdom remind me of something stupid your God, he said. In kuntum sadiqin, if you are truthful. Let us search for the sentence so we can love together. And now you will die laughing at what your God said when he used it. Chapter 2, verse number 23 says, Bring surah like this if you are truthful. Then we find the Quran, the same Quran saying, that any satanic verses shaitan he gave to Muhammad, Allah will delete. Chapter 22, verse number 52. I challenge you, brothers and sisters. You know what? We did not call Zach and Naik for a long time. Prince and Prince, I'm here, and I'm listening to you. Hey, Zach and Naik. How the Quran says, bring Quran like it, a surah like it, verses like it, and then we find the Quran saying that Quran was given to Muhammad from Shaitan. Prince and Prince, first of all, the Quran given from the town is not the theme of the Quran. Yeah. But the verse says Allah will take it from the Quran. So it was a Quran. First of all, the town, he put it in the mouth of the Prophet. He did not put it in the book. What the heck? Okay, so the shaitan, he put it in the mouth of Muhammad. Muhammad, he recited Quran. Thinking it's Quran. Do you agree? Exactly. Okay. But at that time, there's no book anyway. Muhammad just recite, and you Muslims, you write down or you memorize. Exactly. So you're stupid. As long as Muhammad, he said the satanic verses, that means Muhammad himself did not notice that this was verses from shaitan. Exactly. So you stupid idiot, that means shaitan can make Quran. And even Muhammad himself did not notice that this is not the real Quran. Exactly. What the heck? So how the Quran says, if you are truthful, bring a surah like it, make something like it. When the Quran is made by Shaitan already, and Muhammad, he took it and he did not notice. Exactly. Like an egg. What did you eat today? Prince and Prince, this is personal. And please respect yourself. So, what, you are taking drugs or what? Prince and Prince, we Muslim, we don't take drugs. Respect yourself. So, what do you do? 
I can tell you. Okay, just later you can tell me. Like, end, of, end of the year. Okay, okay. People, this religion. This religion. Shaitan, he gave to Muhammad satanic verses, and Allah will take it from the Quran. And the funny is, the Muslim they will say, no, no, he did not receive satanic verses. If you idiot, if he did not receive satanic verses, so how you will take it off? Allah will take off what? It says, but Allah will abolish what shaitan he throw in. How shaitan did not throw, I mean, do you see how, when they deny how full they look like? No, no, shaitan, he could not do any of that. It says here, he will take it off. Imagine somebody saying to you, but Allah will wipe the dirt from the wall. And then they will say, there's no dirt in the wall. What? So he was wiping the dirt, which is not there? And then we go to the books of Tafsir, and we will find that Muhammad, he recite, worshipping the three daughters of Allah. And this is a bigger story. We can continue about it later. But this is additional proof that Muhammad is not Abrahamic. Because if he is Abrahamic, why is worshipping the God with the three daughters? Yeah, I think this guy is just a troll. I don't think even he's a Muslim. Let, us, let me block him. If you want to troll here, I will block you, you know? If you think like you want to say things so to make us like, okay, you know, excited, you are just a stupid, you are near. As you see, people, Muhammad not only not Abrahamic, Muhammad is a fool. His God is a stupid. And this is additional proof that Allah cannot be God. Not enough that Muhammad, he claimed that the sun set in murky water, and then the Quran say confirm that, and then the Muslim, they try to fix it, they say, this is from the perspective of Zulkarnain, brother and sister. When you see the sun sitting, you see it going in the ocean. That is from our perspective. So the Quran is saying that Alexander the Great, when he saw the sun, he thought, brother, he thought that it is sitting in murky water. We go to the Quran. The Quran doesn't say he thought. The Quran says he found it. Allah is speaking. Allah. He is the one is speaking, not the guy. He says when he arrived to the sitting place of the sun, the sitting place of the sun. Have you ever heard of a sitting place of the sun? Read it. When he arrived to the sitting place of the sun, he found it sitting in a spring of a black, muddy, hot water. When the Muslim, they try to cover this, they say, ocean, ocean, do you see the sun go in the ocean? You think it's going in the water? Abdul, it says a spring. You Muslims are confused between a spring and ocean. Did Allah choose the wrong word? Spring is a spring. How big is the spring? Few inches, few meters. It's a spring of water. It's not an ocean. And you know, when you say the spring, it's mean where the water coming from. Not a lake. Is that correct? When I say the spring, we are talking about where the first place where the water comes from the ground. That is the spring. The water come after that is the water of the spring. It can make a lake, it can make a river, it can make whatever. But the spring is the location where the water coming from. How in the world this God is God? And then he changed his direction, and then he found, he keep, the, he keep walking until he arrived, the rising place of the sun. So now there is a resting place of the sun, and there is rising place of the sun. And he found it rising, and people have no shelter. You read the interpretation, they will say to you, they are naked. And the verse says that those people, they can't understand anything. They cannot understand the word. Read it. Verse number 93. The people who cannot understand the word, they said, Zuzukurnain, build for us a dam? You just said they can't understand the word. I mean, do you see how stupid the story? 
If I, if I am speaking to a girl, she is five years old, she will ask me an embarrassment question. She'll say, hold on, you just said, those people, they cannot understand the word. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, they are stupid. They don't like, they are uncivil. They don't know anything. Okay, so how here, they said to him, build for us a dam between us and Gog and Mago. This is a speech of a smart people. So them from people who do not know how to understand the word. From people, they are talking about building a dam. And not only that, between us and people of Gog and Magog, which is they are not a human. By the way, according to Muhammad, Gog and Magog are the Asian. And the Turkish is one of them. That's why Muhammad, he said, stay away from them. So Muhammad, he believe, he teach always, that the Asian, and by the way, I'm not saying that, we can show you the reference. This is their interpretation. The Asian people are people of Gog and Magog. This is why Muhammad, he made fun of them, but he feared them. This is why he said, stay away from the Turkish as long as they stay away from you. And then we find in the Tafsir, it says, that the Turkish are a group of Gog and Magog, but those other group are not behind the dam. So the Muslim until now, they are working for the dam. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Where this dam is located and how you can build a dam between us and them, unless you believe that the earth is a flat. And that's mean he built a dam from the edge to the edge of the earth. And the edge here is metaphorically, we're talking about physically. Like we can say the word edge, as the Quran says, edge of the earth, but we are talking here about literally an edge. So build for us a dam. Between us and them. How that can stop those people? Here we go. A Muslim, he tried to help us. Guys, they search Prophet Google and he come with an answer. Look at this answer. Thank you, Mr. Tim, for the right answer. You try to fix it as usual. You Muslims, you make it a blind. People, read the answer. It says here, they cannot understand the word simply an effeminist or their lack of, no of knowledge. Now, if you want, I can show you an embarrassing thing from your book, Easy. You can find me anything you want embarrassing because your stupid book confirmed my book. You are a donkey. But let us see what you just said. And we can move to that part about my book. How they cannot understand the word and mean they have lack of knowledge. Are you saying to me that your prophet and your God, he used a wrong word? Because in Arabic it says, لا يفقهون قولا They cannot understand any talk, any speech. لا يفقهون And not only that, suddenly, and you are the one who said they have lack of knowledge, but they are the one who told Allah and his messenger, the bisexual Alexander the Great, to build a dam. So how they have lack of knowledge and they knew about building dams? How somebody, you see, I'm using your words. How somebody have a lack of knowledge and they knew about building dams. When the first time they saw a dam, how they knew about it? It's you who say it, they have a lack of knowledge. And why Allah, he take their opinion if they have lack of knowledge? Because Allah, he says to Zulqarnayn, either you do as they want or punish them. It's up to you. And remember, those people are not even Muslims. So what this story is about? And then, Zulqarnayn, he said to them, bring me a Milton copper and iron. 
they have no knowledge, but they have iron and they have melting copper at that time. Is that how people have no knowledge? They are savage, they are nothing, they knew. And how easy to find copper. Like, okay, as Alexander the Great, he come to my town. He says to me, bring me uh, copper. Where I'm going to find Mr. Cooper? Is that something I can dig in my backyard and I will find it in uh, boxes? Or this is something need knowledge to find it and to melt it and to put it together. This is not an act of people who have no knowledge. Collecting iron, melting iron, making iron is not an act of people who have no knowledge. And not to forget to mention that Muhammad, he claimed that in his time, those Gog and Magog, they opened little hole in the wall, which is Alexander the Great he built. But this is a different story. We can talk about it in different time. But as you see, Muhammad did not know anything about Abraham. Muhammad is a fraud. Muhammad is a liar. He claimed Abraham built the Kaaba. Then we find that nobody came to the Kaaba. Nobody came to Mecca. Muhammad was the first person to warn them. They never received scriptures. Muhammad never received Quran, never received a book, never received any revelation. The Quran simply is, you know, and this is Aramaic word. which is qarra wara'a, qarra wara'a, which means he said what he saw. Did Allah give Muhammad something he saw to read? No. Muslim, they claim that Muhammad was illiterate. So even the name of the book called Quran is a wrong name. And it's not even an Arabic word. And obviously, this is something Muhammad, he stole from Waraq ibn Nufal. All of us, we knew, that when Waraq ibn Nufal he died, Muhammad he tried to commit suicide many times. And not only that, the hadith says, when Waraqa he died, the inspiration of Allah stopped. Is that true? Yes. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. And this is the reference. Why the inspiration of God which is called Quran, stop coming when Waraqa he died. Read carefully. But after a few days, Waraqa died, and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while. And the Prophet becomes so sad. As we have heard, he had intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains. And every time he went to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself, Gabriel appeared for him. By the way, the Muslims don't have Gabriel, they have Jibreel, different name. Even the name is wrong. Jibreel appeared to him before him and say, Oh, Muhammad, you are indeed the messenger of Allah. And here you see how funny, stupid the story. Because Muhammad, he it says here many times he intended to do that. Just to make it simple for you, just to show you how stupid this story is. Mr. Jibril, he is an angel, according to Muslims. Kabich, he is an angel. Ask any Muslim, he would say, yes, he's an angel. So, Muhammad, he come from his door. This is Muhammad. And now he walk, he walk, we walk until he arrived to the mountain. This is the mountain. And Muhammad start hiking to the top of the highest mountain. Let's zoom out so people can see better. And then Muhammad, he climbed the mountain. So Muhammad now is here. Now, now, Mr. Gabriel, he appeared to him to say, Khabibi, Muhammad, why you want to jump, Khabibi? You are indeed the messenger of Allah. So what is the problem, Muhammad? You don't believe that he is a messenger. It's a clear mental illness. Well, aren't you the one who angel is speaking to you, deliver a message to you, he squeezed you many times. So why you don't, why you want to kill yourself thinking that you are not messenger of Allah? And the funny is, why Jibreel don't appear to him? 
when he is home, like the guy, he put his shoes in his feet and he want to go to kill himself. Why Mr. A A A A Gabriel, he don't appear to him and he says, Khabibi Muhammad. This is Gabriel now. He's a flying. Khabibi. Don't do it. You are a truly prophet of God. So Muhammad will go home and say thank you. But the angel, he's evil. He wait until the poor Muhammad climbed all the way to the top of the mountain. And now Muhammad is going to jump. At that moment, the angel, he just say, don't do it, don't do it. Why you eat? And it says here, he intended to do it many times. I know you like my art, don't you? There's a guy, he's a Muslim, by the way, his name is Bakaso. Bakaso, he's an Arab. My cousin, my cousin. You know, his name is Abdullah Bakaso. He, you know, he learned how to, how to draw from me. By the way, drawing is haram in Islam. So look how stupid this story. The guy want to kill himself because he, because Waraka, he died. He didn't receive Quran. Understand you that the one who was making the Quran is obviously Waraka. And Muhammad after, look, even the Hadith says here that Waraka was a translating from the Bible into Arabic. That is the Quran. In the same Hadith, if you go here, it says, let us skip the drawing. It says that Waraka, he was translating from the gospel, whatever Allah, he helped him to do. Read carefully. Waraka ibn Nufal, who during the pre-Islamic period become a Christian, the Arabic doesn't say Christian, say Nasara. Obviously, Nasara is a kind of a, a Christian cult like Jehovah's Witnesses. And he used to write the Arabic writing of what? Of the gospel. So this guy, he have Arabic writing, his own writing, his own fabrication of a gospel. And this is where Muhammad, he got Quran. That is the Quran. The man he died, Muhammad now, he said to himself, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to get Quran? Where the revelation? So he decided to kill himself. That's why it says when Waraka died, Muhammad becomes so sad. And right away when he died, the divine inspiration stopped. What Waraka have to do with Allah? Why, why Allah will stop sending revelation? Does it make sense? And then the story getting more funny that it says here that he intended many times to throw himself from the top of the high mountain. And this is telling us that this is a clear sign of mental illness. Clear sign of mental illness. You know, look what this guy is saying. Many scholars, they uh, dispute this. Well, this is very, very stupid. Because this is in Sahih al-Bukhari, and if it's not true, why you Muslim write it then? And this is telling us, this is additional proof that Islam is invalid. Because who is the one who will decide what is valid and what is not? It is depend in the mood, depend in the time, and the Muslim, they pray taqiyya. Anything is embarrassing, they say it's invalid. But this is Sahih al-Bukhari, the most authentic book Muslims they believe in. If this book is not authentic, then everything you have is not authentic. And thank you very much for telling us that in Islam we cannot trust Muslims. They lie. Because who is the one who put this story there? Muslims. Who is the one who printed? Muslims. Who is the one who transformed it through generation? Muslims. Who is the one who translated to English? Muslims. And then you say to us, don't listen to Muslims, they are a bunch of liars. This is exactly what I'm trying to do here. Thank you very much. I'm trying to teach them that you Muslims are a bunch of liars. You are not trustworthy. And in the same time, you are stupid. Because in one hand, you call the book the authentic Bukhari. And then the other hand, you say it's not authentic. So who is the donkey here? And that's just to show you how low IQ this religion is. They're a prophet, he says. Anyone he write beside from me, anything beside the Quran, you should erase it. 
Look at this joke. Look at the stupidity. Look at the low IQ. Your prophet, he just told you, if you write anything beside the Quran, erase it. You write that? He just said to you, don't write it. I mean, the guy, he just said, don't say hummus, you say hummus. People, listen carefully. Do not take down anything from me. And he who took down anything from me except the Quran, he should efface it. They write it down. Uh, the Quran it does not permit suicide. Okay, can you show me the verse that says that? I can show you the opposite. Guys, the Quran does not permit suicide. Show me the verse. Go ahead. You are an ignorant. You forgot you are talking to the master of Islam, who your God, Allah himself, cannot debate him. This is a verse in the Quran say clearly that suiciding, but suicide to kill, not suicide for fun like Muhammad doing, being stupid. Suicide to kill in Islam is an order from Allah. And this is the verse. Chapter 9. 111, that's why the Muslims did their attack in 911. They cannot wait for like a day 111, you know, like month 9, 911. Why the verse saying? Look what the verse saying. We can show it to you in Arabic. Not in English. يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَيُقْتَلُونَ وَيَقْتَلُونَ they will be killed first and then they will kill. Read it. Do you see it? The translation here is a false translation. It's making it the opposite because in Arabic doesn't, you know, it's not really uh, hard to translate in English, maybe. So they will be killed first. In Arabic, it says, they kill, they kill, and they will die. They will kill, and they will die being killed. So you commit suicide, killing others, the death is guaranteed. And actually, this is not me who is saying this is about suicide. There's a million sheikh in the world, in the Muslim world. They say this is about committing suicide for jihad. For the cause of Allah. They kill. They kill. They will they will die first. They have to die. And they kill when they are dying, killing. And we can go and see the interpretation for it. If you, we can change the translator just for fun, just for love. <laughs> and for sure, every translation is going to be different, depending on the Abdul or on their lie. But as they say, all roads would take to Rome. Hmm? You will be you are going to be killed. This is committing suicide. In Islam, it's forbidden to commit suicide to do like what Muhammad did, and this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud, because Muhammad he says the one who killed himself by a knife or something. He will go to hell. So why are you are going to throw yourself from the top of the mountain? Obviously, committing suicide is a sign, clear sign of mental illness. Very clear sign. And this is why Osama bin Laden, he chose this verse specifically, chapter 9. All of us, we knew 9-11, right? 9-11. 9-11 is coming from here. Quran forbid 
so aside let us see if this is true chapter 4 verse number 30 But people will laugh at you because Quran forbid suicide or killing yourself if you are doing it for just being desperate or, you know, but not to do jihad. And I will get you busted in a second. Here we go. This is a chapter 4, verse number 30. And then everybody will laugh at you. Here we go. You are the one who chose this verse, right? Where it says here that you cannot commit, where it says committing suicide. This is chapter 4, verse number 30. Are you sure? Who has gave you this number? Stupid people. A poor Muslim he try his best and we laugh we laugh um He meant 29? Yeah, he meant 29. But this one is about killing yourself, to committing suicide, not to kill others, not to do jihad. Read it. And uh, even this one is not even about killing yourself. But uh, uh, just to show you how they lie when they say Islam is against committing suicide to do jihad. What about we go and read the interpretation? Is that fair, guys? If it says this is against committing suicide to do for, for or this is about somebody is just killing himself because he's desperate, as I said. Let us go. Chapter 4, verse number 29. Here we go. And this is your interpretation. And you are a liar. Do you see it? And by the way, this is not even about killing yourself. But the verse saying here, it appears so to be talking about yourself, killing yourself. Here is talking about if you don't follow Allah, you are killing yourself. Don't do this, don't do that, because you are going to kill yourself. And we can go to Ibn Kathir and we will love more. But let's, before we go to Ibn Kathir, let's see, read another interpretation. This is a Jalala. Let us see Ibn Abbas. Read it. This is Ibn Abbas. Do you see what he's talking about? It's talking about if you are being unjust to the Muslims, you know, killing each other, you will be killed. Don't kill yourself. This has nothing to do with suicide. This is Ibn Kathir. Here we go. And re remember, those are your websites. And this is your Muslim translation. I have nothing to do with it. Why Muslims lie? Because Islam without lies dies. All right. If you commit the aggression and just against people killing others, you are killing yourself. Read it. And now let us go. And this is Ibn Kathir. It's in the front of you.
Okay, give me the interpretation. Go ahead. Guys, he said there's different interpretation. Give me the interpretation you like. We will put it on the screen. This is Ibn Kathir. This is, this is Al-Jalalain. This is Ibn Abbas. We can put it for you in any tafsir. In tafsir. We have all tafsir in Arabic. You are lying. You are lying. I never saw a Muslim he don't lie when he tried to defend. You you told me that this verse is about not to commit suicide. Are we talking about committing suicide and throwing yourself on the top of the mountain? Or committing suicide to do jihad? Neither one fit for this topic here. Because here is talking about if you do this, if you be an unlawful to others, which means the Muslims, because Muslims, they can kill Christians, they can rape them, they can take their property. So he's saying, don't kill your, you know, don't kill yourself, nor kill other by doing what? By disobeying Allah. If you avoid the great sin which are forbidden to you to do, you will live in paradise. If you don't obey Allah, you are killing yourself. This is about doing business. This is about uh, lending money, taking money, paying money back between the Muslims. So why you gave me this verse? You're a prophet, he said, that when a drop of a blood of a shaheed, which is a murder, before one drop of a blood, come down from his body. All his sin is forgiven. So every Muslim, he wanna commit suicide. His dream is to commit suicide. I'm talking about true Muslim, not you. Most of you Muslims, 99%, 99.99%, you don't believe in this garbage. You don't practice it. Even Osama bin Laden, he sent his, all everybody except his sons. His sons are fighting with him at home, playing games. If he is really believed to be a murder for Allah, and this is the biggest honor, then he should go and do jihad, not hiding at home between the women and the goats. And then the American, they come, they find his son playing Atari, and he was watching porn. Uh, the Quran says that a Muslim, he exchanged his life for the last days. And this is committing, shahad, committing suicide. You give your life today, so you can get the eternity later. Chapter 4, verse number 74, the same chapter you gave me. What they do? They purchase by their life, they purchase by their life of this world, heaven. This is committing suicide. And he will be killed, or he will be a winner. You see it? There is an exchange of a product. You want to go to heaven, and your penis will be endless, and you will get a lot of virgins. Their boobs is so big, and their vagina is a huge. You purchase that by paying your life. If you don't like this translation, we can change it for you. Maybe you don't like this translation. Let us go Hilali Khan, so we can love together. Hmm? Read it. 
let those believers who sell the life of this world for the hereafter, how you sell your life? It's talking about you killing, killing others. This is not about like a metaphorical thing. You are not a convert, you are an idiot. You are a, you are a, you are a liar. And I'm sure that he used to be the Pope too. Look at this, guys. So let those believers who sell the life of this world, they sell it, they sell it. It's a sale. For what? For hereafter. How you do that? Go kill. It says clearly, who fights in the cause of Allah and is killed. So he will be killed first. Or get victory. So if you get killed, you purchase heaven immediately in exchange of your life. It's in front of you. And this is exactly the same chapter you gave me to tell me that in Islam we don't commit suicide. You must be a Google kid. Uh, anyway, do we have any other question? You know, I mean, I mean, look how silly this person is. So all those Muslims who do commit suicide, they are not following Islam now. And you are the one who is, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, look at the stupidity. If suicide is against Islam, so why you Muslim do it? I mean, I cannot believe how silly, how stupid their refutation is. So brothers and sisters, it's against Islam to commit suicide, but all of us, we do it. All of us, brother. For nine years, ten years, we were watching YouTube videos in Syria. Muslim doing suicide. No, brother. This is against Islam, brother. And the Sheikh, they were reading the Quran for them before they go in the car and they kill themselves. No, brother. This is against Islam, brother. So look like those Muslims who are doing jihad. They don't know Islam. You know Islam better. <laughs> oh, boy. What a stupid religion. Anyway, guys, I hope the topic was good for you today. Now, I know the number is little because we did not warn people about we are coming, right? Nobody knows I'm coming. Uh, this is why you better subscribe, not only to YouTube, join us in Patreon. It doesn't cost you money, it's for free. Patreon will send you a notification, but don't send me any messages in Patreon, I will block you. Don't send me. If you have a question, post it in the comment section here. Or when we go in the chat. Don't ask me question there, I will block you immediately. All right? At least there, you can give me, you can receive a, a, like a notification. Can we talk about your Bible? No, Tim, you cannot, because your stupid Quran confirmed my Bible. So if you want to argue about my Bible, you need to argue about your stupidity. How my Bible, you don't like it. And then your stupid Quran says, believe in it. Who is the stupid here? Are you a donkey? Can we talk about by your Quran confirm what is between our hands? Literally saying Torah and Injil. And literally saying what is between their hands? What is with them? And not only saying confirming this is a lie translation, it says Musaddiqan, which means believing in what is with them. Do you see it? It's a Christian print. Can we talk about your Bible now? No, you cannot. You are Abdul. You are a pagan. Before we talk about my holy book, you need to den den un like denounce, if I'm saying the word correctly, the filthy Allah and his pagan black stone. Stop kissing it. Stop worshipping them. And you will be welcome to talk about my Bible. And I will be happy to take your call. And now I will take your call. Even if you don't believe in the Bible, but you don't dare. A black stone kisser who worships such a stupid God. After all what we saw you, all of this is not enough for you to leave Islam. Are you stupid or what? You must be stupid. What kind of God he promised you a woman with big boobs? You must be a booby person, aren't you? You go to bed 
and you close your eyes and you see, you don't see Allah, you see boobs. What kind of God this God is? What is the holiness of God? So now he don't even use the word women when he talk about, he, he just talk about boobs. You see when they translate, they say women, women. But there's no women in the verse. It just says boobs. Boobs. You have to be a person suffering from mental illness to believe in such a garbage. Full cup, boobs, pillow, couches, a bracelet from gold, a cup of wine mixed with ginger. What is that? Any buffet is better than this. This is God talking, this is the holy God. So now we've got, okay, Allah, so if I believe in you, Allah, now, man, the Quran is touching my, <clears throat> and now I feel it really, mm, yeah, the boobs, uh-huh, yeah, but Allah, why you are using the word kawaib, not round, kawaib mean a cube. Allah, he will promise us a cube. Breast? Those women, they will have a cube? Breast? I love it. Finally, brother. So, they are not like this, brother. No. You are mistaken. Actually, it would be funny, by the way, if they are like this, and this is the nipple. That is something, you know? I mean, just think about it. Allah will give you kawaib. This is how their boob says. And this is the nipple. MashaAllah. The first cube breast. I mean, really, we are sick of those boobs we see. They are not round, you know, round, like, you know, in the uh, you know. It's time for a change. It's time for something new, something creative. Hey, Allah. I have an opinion. I don't know if you like my opinion. Like, can you like do, put some decoration? I mean, uh, just listen to me. I don't know. You like my idea. It's up to you. You are Allah, not Allah. You know, what about we put like here some flowers in the boobs, you know? And we have like a, a fountain come from the nipples, you know, and water come. Uh, no, no water, whiskey, whiskey. Please, no water. Forget about the water. Enough water. Yeah, whiskey. A fountain like, you know, go their nipples. I mean, a creative. You know, Allah, and Allah, can you please make a USB charger? Because my cable is short. I just put it there in her boob and we charge the phone. And, and yeah, Allah, I just remember. Does it come with the Bluetooth? So we can communicate from like, you know, without like, you know, a streaming or, you know, you know, you know the thing. Can you like put Bluetooth 5? I mean, what this God is about? Boobs? Vaginas? Can you describe what is inside the vagina? And you want to tell me, let me talk about your book? You know, I always really, I wanted those boobs to have a bell, you know, bell? So like in a Christmas time, if Santa Claus became a female, we will hear the bell like, jungle bells, jungle bells, jungle all the way. The boobs is coming, the boobs coming, the boobs in the way. Hey, da da da. Unbelievable. This is God boobs? You know? What the heck is that? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Do you have little dignity? The pimp God? And now like, I don't want to show you the verse about the, ver the, 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 the vaginas because that will make me draw in it. And that is not nice. You know the thing? So we better behave. But did your God Allah behave? Hmm? I don't know actually how I can go into... Uh, I can't draw this one. Man, I will, uh, the women here, they will shoot me dead. Brother and sisters, 
Allah, he described the best descriptions for the vaginas of women in heaven. Brother, you would love it, brother. Look at this. So now I'm not going to draw a vagina. Don't worry. Be happy. I will draw something else. Here it says that those women, there is a skin there. Nobody did open it. Now you know how they open it. You know the thing. Okay. And not a human nor a genie. Not a human, neither a genie. Let us go to the art. It's art time. But remember, we can draw vagina now, so take a note. So, brother, imagine it like this. Imagine it like a door. A door, brother. And inside the door, there's another door. And inside the other door, there is another door. And inside the other other door, there is another door. And now the inside the other 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 door, there is a line made of silk. You need to cut it off in order to pass. You know the thing. Let me color it all, you know. Yeah, this is better. So brother, this is a, this is a brother of fabric. It is uh, made of a skin. And brother, Allah want to guarantee you that no genie and no human opened this fabric before, brother. It's brand new. The wax is still there. If you touch it, you feel the wax, brother. Then you put the key. Should I draw the key? <laughs> this is religion. This is religion of God. It must be godly then. We have to admit. This is God describing what is inside the vagina. It come with the wax. May Allah wax you. And then brother, after you open the wax, brother, you will notice that there is a blood will come here. The end of the movie. Take a beer. And the funny is that according to Muhammad, each time you open this skin, Allah will make it blue again. Version again. But what the heck? You just step with the women and you open the door. You come after two minutes. It's closed again? That's deep. You open it, Allah close it. You open it, Allah close it. You open it, Allah close it. And you get like, what the heck? Did I open it yesterday? Maybe I was. Ah, Allah is reclosing it again. And this is how why they say the versions, because always they say version. And look how stupid this version is. Muhammad he knew that those Arabs are obsessed to be the first man to F. The first man to have the women. So he promised them that those virgins, they will stay virgin. You have them, they are having their skin back. But this is not, they're not virgins. You just have them 1,000 times already. Did you see the stupidity? So you open it, Allah close it. You open it, Allah close it. You open it, Allah close it. It's a, even their version is a cheating. There's a product in the Middle East, a lot of women who they are very good women, 
they, you know, like they go and they sleep with everybody. And now she want to get married. She's wearing hijab, burqa, you know. So there is a there is a product made in China. Thanks to Chinese, they knew everything. They knew that they knew what the Middle Eastern they need. So it's called Virgin Again. It's a it's a case of a blood or something like killer like a blood, feel like blood. The woman she inserted in her private part in her wedding night. When the guy then the husband who he thinks she is the virgin, he sleep with her. She act like and eh, she is in pain. And then the blood come out. And then he said, Takbir, she's a virgin, Allahu Akbar. He called his mom, Mom, I just slept with her and the blood is coming. Oh, son, thanks to Allah, she is a good woman. I was worried because people, they said many things about her before. But thanks to Allah, we should not listen to them. Virgin again. And now there is like a surgery. It, it costs you like maybe $50, you know, and you will have a, a door installed again. A door with LED. <laughs> this is how silly, stupid this version. Guys, are you, do you like my art? Look at this. Let me put my signature here so you guys don't steal my art because I know you. You will take it, you put it in eBay. Huh? Yeah, you put it in eBay. Yeah, I will type my signature. Okay. And here, this is part of the signature, not all of it. Okay? It goes out of the picture, but this is normal for artists like us. You know, it's very long. Yeah. So now, uh, this is the first signature, and now I will add just a little word here, you know? Yeah. And now... You know, like, uh, I, I just forgot something. Hold on. I think I need to add it. Yeah, because, you know, uh, uh, the signature have to be perfect. I hate to, like, you know, when I write a check, yeah, I need to use, like, the, I use the whole checkbook just for the signature. And the check is different page, you know, like, you know, yeah. So now, like, okay, I, I will add one thing here, just one thing, one, just a small dot. Yeah, I think now we are done. MashaAllah. So now the picture is ready and none of you can take it and sell it and, you know, like do stuff, you know, because we have the signature of the artist and the artist is Allah. This is Quran. You know, in Bangladesh, uh, uh, people of Bangladesh, they write Arabic words next to their house door. Anyone knows why? Who knows why? Because in Islamic countries, Muslim they follow the steps of the Prophet. The Prophet he unzip, he grab his penis, he, he he piss everywhere, anywhere in the street. Women go in, children come in, anywhere. So what they do? They write Arabic on the walls to stop public urine. To stop what? Public urine. So the Abdul, he walked by, he doesn't speak Arabic, he thinks this is Quran. And the Muslim, they respect Arabic, it's the language of Allah. And this is how they stop the urination. They write it all over their wall. Isn't it amazing? Following the ethic of the Prophet. Pissing on the wall of every neighbor. Hmm. Yeah, actually, my signature, by the way, Joe Biden, he asked me to use my signature to define what is Mumin. Because by the time they read my signature and they fix, I mean, they, they understand the signature, they will find what is women. The Democratic Party now, they are trying hard to find what is women. Definition of what is women? Hmm, difficult, difficult, you know? Actually, I, I wish I am good in... Uh, what do you mean I'm good? I'm very good in that. Hold on. Let me do this. This is the situation for the stupid Western people. 
who they are liberals, specific liberal liberals. So this is a rooster. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Okay, this is a rooster. He have things in his head. Hmm? So Mr. Rooster. He was walking down the street. He saw a chicken. What kind of a chicken this chicken is? She looked like Biden. Oh, I, I took everything off from the... Uh, unbelievable. The whole art is gone. Okay, anyway, just if you are good in drawing, draw it for me. So we have here a rooster and here a chicken, female. The rooster, he asked the chicken, uh, what is your gender? The chicken is sitting on top of eggs. She looked at the rooster, saying, huh? This is how stupid those Western are. I mean, even chicken, she knew that she is a female, and the, and the rooster, he knew that he is the male. And those stupid liberals, they are trying to figure out what is a female. They have images, they just received images from NASA for the telescope from a 1.5 billion kilometer. Yet in this country and the Europe, they are trying to find out what is female. The answer is very simple. It's Muhammad wearing women clothes. What a bunch of stupid people. Oh boy. Thank you all for being here. I hope we have a good time together today. And uh, uh, it's time to delete some previous videos. The video I made today, I don't know if you watch it or not. You can search it in people who they download my videos. And we will see you again soon. May the Lord bless you. Pray for the Muslim to see the truth, and the truth will set them free. The vagina God cannot help. He is busy with vaginas. By the time he finish, he will be finished too. When that vagina piss him out. Islam is silly, made by a silly, for the silly. And if a foolish man like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? Think about it. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified <laughs> and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. <laughs>